So today we're going to be talking about water and some of the things that go along with that, right? And so, there's just so many amazing, not amazing, but amazing uh, <laughs> qualities of water. I got my buddy here, James Hope, going to be talking to us and sharing a little ooh, truth ooh, about ooh, water as it relates to the nature of God. <laughs> Come on. So join us here in a minute as we get behind the why. This is the Ray Ellis Podcast. Let's get behind the why. All right. As we get started, hey, I want you guys to be reminded, please go down, hit the bell. Subscribe, like, and subscribe to the channel. I got it out right this time. Like and subscribe. And also our Patreon account if you want to help support us on what the work we're doing here. And we have a... That's it, right? <laughs> yeah. Instagram. Instagram. That's it. Instagram. <laughs> I did so good in practice. <laughs> you and me do this for you, bro. That's sad. I did so good in practice. Oh. So, Ryan, you got to edit all that out, man. Sorry. I said, leave it in. Let's show the world. Instagram. But really, Patreon. like and subscribe yeah. to the channel. Help, hey, help us get this conversation started. We're going to talk a little bit off track, track today, a little bit about some things that are maybe not your average conversation, but I think will really uh, inspire you. So, again, I have with me my brother James Holt today. He's a water expert. Greetings. So we're going to be talking about some, some qualities Thank of you. water today. Be careful on expert. Especially how it relates to the nature of God. So, we were talking, the way this conversation started is that we were talking one day and my brother mentioned water and I said something about, oh, I would love to drink some pure water. And I just opened up a can and I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm talking about. So I thought I'd throw this back at you and let you mm. share some of that knowledge with our, with our audience today. So James, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background with water and then we'll just jump right into this conversation. Mm, good. All right. Well, to begin with, I was born in water. Can I say that? <laughs> <laughs> Well, they say a dry birth is not a good thing. So (laughs) John chapter three. So I've done water my whole life. My family's been in water. I've been in the water treatment industry now for 40 years. Ah, okay. So we know water. We know all types of water. We treat all types of water. So to know water and then go to the spiritual aspect of water is really interesting. Mm. Oh, I'm looking forward to diving into it. Get that, see that pun there, diving into it. That's what you work like that. (laughs) So we had said something early today. We talked about this, the way this the words change over time. And right. now I take that back. The usage of words change over time. Uh, and most of it has to do with the dollar. We change words yep. because we want to we wanna market it a certain way. And so we start right. hearing people talk about pure water and drinking pure water and all these other things. And one of the things you were mentioning off camera, we're talking about people thinking about water now as a source of, uh, what you say it, of uh, nutrition. nutrition. Right. So let's talk about that. And then let's go back to what, when we talk about pure water, what are we really talking about? So go ahead, lead us right. into that. So by definition, you know, when you say pure water, it's like saying infinity. Okay. Right. Over the past century, water has changed the way we apply it, the way we treat it, the way we filter it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when you talk about drinking water in pure water, a lot of people think about rain. They think about snow. Hey, that's pure water. It's good to drink. There's nothing in it. Mm-hmm. But when you get to an electronic grade water that they have like at Micron and industry, you get like an E4, E5 grade water. Uh, you can't drink that. So ultra pure water, man-made water, when you filter it to the highest degree, is not healthy to drink. So there's mm-hmm. a spiritual application there. So when so, you say you can't drink it, I mean, what would happen if I just took a big old glass full of Pure E4, E4 E5 right. water and do it. Mm. Very good. Come what, on. What would happen? What would right. happen to me if I did that? Well, it would make you more thirsty, number one, right? Well, so ah. when you it drink pure water, thirsty? it makes you more thirsty. But what happens is pure water by definition, right? The purest form of man-made water um, is naturally hungry. It wants to neutralize itself. So mm. it goes after and becomes a part of everything it touches. So pure mm-hmm. water, if we were to drink it, the lining, the flora of, of our stomach would get eaten away. And it'd actually kill you eventually if you drank it long enough. Whoa. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Last time I was asking for pure water. That's right. <laughs> so when we say pure water, right, when you drink bottled water, you know, it's a level of pure like melted snow or rain, right? Mm. Pure water to drink is water that's been filtered down to minimal inorganic minerals. Okay. Right? Because when you measure the purity of water, it's the presence of organic and inorganic minerals, bacteria. So forth and so on. So drinking water should be pure, but to a certain extent. Mm. Okay. So we're talking purified, not pure. Exactly. Okay. So it's, right. it's a degree. It's a degree we're talking about here. Right. So well, you, you just said something, though, that intrigued me. You said if I drink pure water, the first thing it would do is make me more thirsty. Yes. But then if I continue drinking it, it would kill me. Exactly. Wow. Okay, now, so what I'm going to look at now, because, you know, this is how my mind works. This is how I see the world. Okay, I'm thinking... The Bible often refers to 
the word of God as being that living water. Right. And Jesus even went so far in, in the gospel and talking in John 4, he talked to, to about the woman at the well. Mm-hmm. And he said that out of your belly will flow rivers of this living water. So right. I, I began to think now, what would ha- that correlation in my mind? I'm thinking again, okay, here is the word of God, which is this water. If I drink of it, it's going to make me more thirsty. But if I continue to drink of it, it's going to kill me. Correct. Mm. So now there's some serious spiritual implications there. Absolutely. That can be very scary. That can be very sure. scary. Mm-hmm. Because if I drink this thing, it makes me want to drink more of it. But by drinking more of it, it's going to kill me. Mm. You see how that don't right. work? Right. It, it's just that's, that's a contradiction there. So as I begin to come into the presence of God and begin to drink this water, the mm-hmm. word of God. Now, y'all stay with me for a minute. No, don't, don't, don't. I know I'm jumping spiritual for a second, but stay with me. <laughs> if I'm drinking the word of God, it's going to make me want him more. Exactly. It's going to wake up in me that desire to be right with him, to have Correct. true life. But it also is going to, it's going to exact a cost in my life. It's going to kill this flesh. It's mm-hmm. going to destroy it. And so when I think about that, as it relates spiritually speaking to water, that that's what I want to see happen. I, I mean, I don't want to see it. My flesh in and of itself doesn't want to see it. <laughs> I was like, no, we don't want to. <laughs> you know, my flesh is going to always resist. What's right. it? Romans 8, right? Uh-huh. Right. Romans 8 says mm-hmm. what? The carnal man cannot, indeed mm-hmm. will not right. honor God. There's right. no time that my body's going to be like, oh, give me more Jesus. My body is going to be like, no, mm-hmm. I know what I'm doing. So I have to continue to stay into that place of desire, of need. Now, you open your book up there on purpose. You just open it because you like oh, to look I, at the word. You hit on something. Well, so go ahead, this go is hit a, me back there. This is the scripture back. I had this morning. Okay. So this is the intent. I'm talking to my kids this week. It's Passover week, right? We're coming up on. And it says in the Old Testament that no man can see God and live. Right. Because he's a consuming fire. Because mm-hmm. we're in sin. We're a fallen creature. The Lord wants to live with us eternally. That's his end play. Right. We're going through, like we talked this morning, you're going through the Passover, the Exodus, the Seder plate, the Jewish cause, the Red Sea, Mm -hmm. the wandering, the cross, um, the resurrection. There's an end play to this. Right. Mm -hmm. Come on. That the Father wants to dwell with us us eternally. Mm -hmm. We have to be made perfect to be able to do this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So because of this, and we want to drink this pure water. Well, Mm -hmm. to be able to abide and drink this pure water, we have to be perfect. We've got to be changed. Huh? And so when we're changed, that sacrifice you're talking about, when we're changed uh-huh. at the heart level, when our heart is changed, that circumcision of heart, when we're changed, then we can abide in a holy God's presence and drink this pure water that gives eternal life. And you, you, you think about that. Now you back up and look at this big picture. We don't like to think of ourselves as being impure. That's right. No, we want to think of ourselves as being pretty good people. You know, we all have this idea that I'm okay. I'm not as bad as some people, but yeah. I'm not, I'm, I'm better than most, you know, that kind of thing. And yet when we come to this, this concept of this pure water, I just keep thinking about this commercial. I think it was, I don't know what it was, but it's a, a, it's a summer day, a bright summer day. There's this long pool and this guy dives in the water and he comes out the other side. And he pushes up the water, drips all off his face. You know, mm-hmm. that's the kind of image I think of when they talk about pure water. But I think now if this was a, a pool of pure water and I dove in there, I wonder if I would be able to make it to the other end. That's right. <laughs> or would be like, or would it would it kill me in the process? You see what I'm saying? Right. And, and but this is what God is demanding of us. He's not asking us. He's demanding of it, and that's the standard that He's going to hold us to is that absolute perfection. Hmm. That's good. But yet, it is not our perfection that we need. It's His perfection. Absolutely. Because if I jump in that pool of water, I know what's going to happen. I'm going to. There's going to be a part of me that wants it. Mm-hmm. Because you said it makes you thirsty. It does. But I will never be able to get satisfied in my carnal man because my carnal man can't live in that environment. It's just always going to be pushing back against that. So we think about this again. You, we were talking about water. There's this new thing we've been you, you mentioned earlier today with people now wanting to uh, come up with water as a, nutru- a nutritional supplement. Right. And, right. And, uh, and and the idea of the, the what you said, the solid and the, uh, the organic and inorganic. Let me get my terms right. right. Organic, right. inorganic solids that are, that are found in water. And we know, at least what little I know, uh, probably because you put a filter in my house, is, <laughs> <laughs> is that there are things in my water I don't want there. You know, there's things that come across in my water that I want to get out of it. Mm-hmm. And those are the things that uh, 
you know, man at different levels will, will approve of so much this and so much that that can be found in water. And, and to a certain level, they call it bad water or not potable water. Right. Uh, green water, I think, is the term they use for it. And so, but we, on the other hand, we can drink, I mean, our dogs and animals can drink stuff that we don't drink, or shouldn't drink. <laughs> Correct. That's right. <laughs> you know, and so this water is, is a very important thing to us, but yet, I mean, it's everywhere, but at the same time, you know, there, there's, there, there's limits to it. So I'm, I guess what I'm trying to say yeah. is that there's this idea that we see water, it's, it's everywhere, but there's things that water is not intended to do for us mm-hmm. on, on that level. Exactly. And so can you speak a little bit about that, about this water as a nutritional supplement and how, what's this main thought going in, in this popular idea that's going around with that? Yeah, the big craze these days, you know, they say that cancer cannot live in a high, high alkalinity environment, high pH, high alkalinity. So a big craze in drinking spring water that people say, well, James, I want to drink the minerals in water because they're good for you. Mm-hmm. But the fact of the matter is the minerals in water are known as inorganic minerals. And when your body sees these, it doesn't know what to do with it. So it stores them. uranium and arsenic and nitrates and fluoride and metals and phosphates, all kinds of things in water. So these are all natural elements and constituents found in water. Mm-hmm. You think oh, it's good to drink? No, it's not because your body is a filter. Mm-hmm. So, the more pure the water to a certain level, the better for you. Because if your water is pure and your body doesn't have to filter it, then what happens is it's easily assimilated into the bloodstream. Mm. It tastes good. It's good for you. And it flushes your body. So pure water is good to mm. drink, but not too pure. Because when you get too no, we pure. We say pure. We're talking purified. Pure, purified, right. Okay. You get down to a certain measurement, what they call parts per million. So uh, pure water is good to drink. That's not a good source of nutrition as far as regular tap water mm-hmm. or regular well water. Water is a terrible source of nutrition. You'd have to drink for like selenium or uh, organic calcium. You'd have to drink like 15 gallons a day with an <laughs> average water to get a yeah, no. your your daily allowance of you know, like selenium. You'd Do you get the feeling when he starts talking about water, he's like he starts speaking Greek or something. <laughs> it's like we were we were talking English so, here a minute ago. Then he started talking about all. I'm like, what language did I you just like, slide into? Honestly, it was like a really cool documentary of like water. <laughs> like this is well, awesome. But, but, but see, the thought is pure water. You can't yeah. drink pure water and live. And you can't dwell in God's presence. Can I read Titus? Please, please. The thought that I had. Ryan, how we doing? <laughs> this is all new to me, brother. <laughs> He's okay. Good. Do I need to smile more? No, I, I like all your right. face. It was good. Yeah. Don't touch your face. I didn't touch my face. Six feet, bro. <laughs> so you're the Rona. <laughs> Titus 3.3 3 says this. Lord put this on my heart this morning. I know when we're going to talk about this. For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. Mm -hmm. But when the kindness of the love of God our Father and Savior towards man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us through the washing of regeneration Mm -hmm. and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out to us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, here it comes, by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Mm. So what was on my heart this morning, Ray, as you asked me to talk about water, that what's the Father's end play? Mm -hmm. Because he's all about process. You go through Israel and the Mm -hmm. feasts and the journey and the remembrance and the passion it's all a process right. for all of us. And the end process is that we would be his, Leviticus twenty twenty six. Mm-hmm. I love you and I've set you apart because you are mine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You said this morning, the father's jealous. Yes, he is. So his end play is that we would dwell with him. So we will dwell with him. We have to be made pure and maintain our purity through the washing of the word, mm-hmm. that pure word. So the only way we can take in this pure word is to be pure ourselves and that's by the blood of Jesus. You know, yeah. you, you're talking about uh, water as a nutritional source, and and you said it looks good and 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 you you need it, and so there's there's a, a natural trap there. Um, on one hand, we have this absolute pure water, the water that if we drink it, we're going to desire more of it. Right. We, yet it will kill us. Yeah. So that's likened to the presence of God. Mm-hmm. If I were to walk into the presence of God in myself. That would be a recognizing that he is God. Mm-hmm. That would be this absolute idea. Oh, 
He's God. <laughs> but in his presence, it would consume me. It would kill me. It would destroy me. And yet, on the other hand, the other extreme, the enemy of our soul knows our need for water. Stay with me now. That's he, good. he knows our That's need good. for water. So he's going to give us water and tell us that there's water over here that has nutritional value. But those solids that are in that water are not made for us. But our body's a filter. Mm -hmm. So those solids get us and they trap, get trapped inside of us. And as they get trapped inside of us, they influence our body. Mm -hmm. So think about it this way. If we were to get water that was not pure. When I'm talking about not pure now, I'm talking about water that's been defiled. Okay. Uh, with bad doctrine, with the doctrines of men, mm -hmm. uh, Very false philosophies, uh, Colossians chapter two, right? Mm -hmm. The philosophies of men. Uh, don't touch, don't, don't, don't mm -hmm. eat, don't do this. Don't, all these things that we come up with that are, that sound good. Right. And they have this religious, they look like water. Right. But it's not. And you, and you look at it and you're like, oh, it's sparkly, it's cold. Oh, I drink it. It sure. feels good. Quenches my thirst, quote unquote. But while I'm taking in this, this, this false water, all those impurities, those, what you call them, solid inorganics, right. are, are being Correct. trapped in exactly. my body. And so they're adding to the substance of who I am. Mm. The problem is, it's not adding anything good. Right. And eventually, they will lead to my destruction. Correct. But unlike this living water that, cons that will consume me in the glory and the presence of God, this leaves me trapped in myself. And so now Very I good. am left with the substance of myself. And all I can do now is point my finger at you and say, you gave me this impure water. Mm. And you're like, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Oops. Mm. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, so we, this, this concept of water, the more I think about it, the more I can see how God being, being God, you know, and all of creation is, is his tool, is his instrument. The Bible says in what, Psalm 19, that the heavens declare the glory of God, but the earth does too. Mm -hmm. The earth declares the glory sure of God. When right. you look at life and how it, it, it works, even something, quote unquote, as simple and as abundant as water, when you think about it in, on this absolute extreme, it's a great representation of who God is. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right. If I dive into a fountain of godliness, yeah, that'd be that moment where I recognize that mm -hmm. this is God. Something you said that just struck me is because water is one of those like foundational things we need to live. Mm -hmm. Like you need it. And so there are so many counterfeits. Right. And especially right now with all of the corona and fear going mm -hmm. on, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I had a class online, so we're meeting online, but we do it through Zooms. We all see each other's faces. <laughs> and just the conversations we're having, I'm like, people are scared. Right. And they cling to things that do give life, mm -hmm. but it's not that real life, you right. know? And so I think even in the midst of different chaos in the world, there are so many counterfeits that give that, we talked about this before, that like counterfeit peace or that right. counterfeit. Yeah. Um, but because we know there is a way that we do need, right. yeah, but we do mm -hmm. need these fundamental things for life. And that that's like the prime time. I think even for believers where we do get easy to get deceived if we're not mm -hmm. filling ourselves up with the word, that right. real life, because we're trying to quench that natural thirst that we have. What's the word God says? Study to show thyself approved. Right. A workman that rightfully divides the word of God. And that's where we have to come into that disciplined study of the word of God, mm -hmm. where it's not enough to just kind of know about the word of God. Mm -hmm. I need to know what God, God's word says mm -hmm. contextually. And, and one of the things we talked about in Bible study the other night was that, you know, when I read the Bible, I have to take it into consideration of who wrote it, mm -hmm when they wrote it and who they were writing it to because there are cultural applications right. that don't necessarily apply to me. Mm -hmm. But then there are those spiritual principles that are truth that that apply to everybody. And those are things we have to look for and understand contextually what the word of God is saying. Because like we talked about this pure water and this impure water, the nature of God matters. Mm -hmm. So if I'm reading this and I see God as being my buddy, my pal, my friend, old Joe on the block, then that's going to make me, that's going to inform my idea of who God is. Mm. And then my life will only be a reflection of who my God is. Right. So if my God is, is hateful and mean, then guess who I'm going to be? I'm going to be hateful and mean. If my God is lustful and greedy, then guess who I'm going to be lustful and greedy. So having a right understanding of who God is and the nature of God informs my life and how I live. It tells me what I can do, what's right, what's wrong. And so that's why it's so important to come back to that living water that Jesus was talking about. Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. You're being sustained 
by the water in the presence of God. Mm-hmm. And so it becomes so important, as you were saying there, to understand that truth and have that because we do have that hunger. We do have that mm-hmm. thirst for water. And that's why all this other water is out there. It's so attractive to mm-hmm. us. And everybody want to put their little spin on it and sure. talk about how great it is, you know. <laughs> sure. Yeah. You know, now this, we went on a cruise to Alaska not long ago, and one of the things they were really big on was glacier water. All right. And I'm like, natural minerals. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. They chip the ice off and melt, and you can drink the glacier water. I'm like, it's water. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so I'm just right. like, okay. So it's 2,000 year old water, but it's still water. <laughs> so, oh, it's aged. <laughs> so the birds that spit in that water are long dead, but they still got <laughs> the birds spit in it. So sorry, y'all. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> you can say something. Bro. You said something. It made me think of the woman at the well, John 4. Right? Okay. Mm-hmm. Here's this dialogue that Jesus is having with the Samaritan. And he says, getting into verse 13, Jesus says to her, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him fountain of water springing up to everlasting life. Mm -hmm. So what does a fountain do? It gives. A fountain Mm -hmm. doesn't take. Right. A fountain gives and gives of its abundance. Right. So that's our call. Mm -hmm. We are called to give. You know, like they say, the call of the gospel is to come and die. Right. Mm-hmm. Die how? Lay your life down. Right. Mm-hmm. Clean your vessel. So when that pure water hits us and it leaves us as a fountain, it's not adulterated. Right. We don't have religion and, and man's philosophies in it. You know, All we're given when we're pure, when we keep ourselves, the water that we give is that fountain that Jesus was talking about that is a blessing to others and to a dying world that doesn't know mm-hmm. him or want to know him. Right. Mm-hmm. But when they see us and it's like, why are they so happy? What is this fountain that's boiling over? It's pure water that comes from a, a set-aside vessel. And you wow. think about that. When you, when you as a child of God are living in that way, right. and you just naturally put on, we talked about earlier, when you have drink pure water, what does it do? It make you want more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there's something that, that cries out to the soul of man when I hear that truth. I remember back, gosh, this is almost 40 years ago now, I was talking, well, actually, because I've been retired 31 years, so it's probably been, uh, let's say, about 30 years ago, actually. And um, we were talking one day at work, and this young lady was telling me about the type of man she wanted to marry. And I said to her, what you really want is a Christian. (laughs) She said, I don't want to marry no Christian. And so I did, and I repeated to her the qualities that she had said she thought would be attractive in a man. I said, these are Christian traits. I said, what you want is you want the benefits of being a Christian without the obligation right. of submission to God. Mm-hmm. And she stopped and she looked at me and she goes, I never thought about that. And that's what you were mm-hmm. just saying. We want this. Our spirits cry out to this life. Right. But our carnal man's like, no, I want to be free. I want to do my own mm-hmm. thing. You know, and it's like you can't have both. You can't have the true benefit of this living water without surrendering to it. Right. Because if you try to come across with that. With that, then what will happen is on the one hand, on this impure water we talked about before, is that then what will happen is man then creates that structure of submission mm-hmm. where th- man becomes the authority or they build a system be- that becomes right. the authority and then they obligate you to obedience right. right there. Whereas on this side, there is that demand of your life, but it's a, it's a voluntary surrender and mm-hmm. love. Here, exactly. it's fear, it's domination, it's all those things, it's control. But over here, it is that sense of, you know, come. I mean, I, I think about it all the time. One of the things that we've been talking about, the, the feast, the, uh, the, three, the three transitory or, uh, feasts or the journey feasts, mm-hmm. uh, Passover, uh, tents, and then Pentecost, mm-hmm. those three that the nation were required to travel and celebrate uh, we talk about those, and, and what we think about is in those, there's a required offering. Mm-hmm. And the phrase that the Lord uses over and over again there is give according to the blessing that the Lord has given you as you see fit in your heart mm-hmm. to give. And you see that voluntariness that that's required of God, that God requires of us, should I say. He says, yeah, I want you to be a blessing, but I want you to be a blessing because you love, because you receive love. But, and over here, we have this obligation of you give because it's, you, you have to do this. Right. And we have all these things attached to it. But here, God has one thing. Because I've loved you, 
I want you to be a blessing now. And when you come and these, one thing about these celebrations, these feasts, when you look at them, it's a celebration for the body. God's even then he's not taking, you know what I'm saying? Even though we're giving to God, he says, yes. now bring your whole family with you, your mom, your dad, your sister, your brother, your children, the, the servants, everybody. He said, we want you to celebrate. He, he's still giving. Absolutely. He's still giving. He's never taking from us. He's giving. So even when he accepts our offerings, it's really a, a blessing back to us. And so we think about that in the big picture. You know, you were talking about receiving water. And I remember when uh, you worked for the other guys. <laughs> and you put a, a, a water system in our house. Right. And, and I've never, I've, I was one of those guys. I grew up in the South. and I drink water out of the river. It didn't bother me at all. <laughs> All kinds of little worms. Now that's a different water. It didn't bother yeah. me at all. So, but my wife, who grew up in Southern California, you know, when I first married her and she talked about buying bottled water, I thought she was absolutely crazy. I thought, why would you buy water in a bottle when you can just get it out right. of the faucet, girl? I just didn't have any, just, just mm. even today, I drink water. Out of, we own a well, I just drink the water. My wife sure. likes purified water, she does. But I remember when you put the system in our house. And how excited she was. <laughs> I mean, it was like she got a new toy. She's was, so excited. I know. <laughs> I just yeah. was thinking about that, about receiving. You were talking about when we bring this new water and we bring this living water. Mm. When a soul is open to receive this living water, the joy that it brings. And I was Come just on. correlating that. That here my wife has got this, this water that has Come on. the solids in it that she can taste that I don't taste. But she could taste them and she's like, oh, that's not good. I'm like, okay, come on, it's in your head. No, she says it's in my mouth. Anyway, <laughs> but <laughs> when she got that, that water system in the house, she was like, oh. I mean, she was so excited to get it in the house. And even James to, is such a good guy. You know, she, I mean, she was so deceived. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh. Ouch. No, you my brother. Ouch. But I was just looking at that because the, the truth in her said she was really, and even today, this is what's so funny. It's been 15 years yeah. since we had that system put yeah, in the house. At least. And uh, when the filter starting to go bad, she notices. And she'd be like, honey, you need to go get new filters. And I'd be like, what? Still get water out the tap. She's like, you need to go get new filter because she wants She's that a good pure. Woman. Yeah, she wants that good water. Come and on. so when you are that way, when you are committed to mm-hmm. having that pure water and you hear something that's not right sure. or that water come across, your spirit's like, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. mm-mm. And go ahead. Now, what, what happens? This is like answering potential questions that could come out. So what happens for a person when you take on a little bit of impure water you know, I'm, I'm just thinking because you said the example of mom, uh-huh. right? Drinking water right. and she can tell when it's like, man, getting bad. And she wants to get the filter back. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm thinking as a believer, there are times where we let our guard down. Yep. yep. And you start getting some water that's sure. not so good. We not get so lazy. Good. Mm-hmm. Right. So what do you do? What's the next step? You know, for for your mama, she gets me and gives me the car keys. Tell me, go get a filter. <laughs> and the credit card. <laughs> and the credit card. She's like, go get me a filter. That's what yeah. happened with your, your mama. That's right. And so what we good. should do is be just like my wife. We should mm-hmm. be like, no, this ain't good. Mm-hmm. This ain't good. Right. I need to clean this up. It's like we were listening to this message the other day on, on, on video. We were watching the disc. And you were like, ugh. And I said to you, I said, you know, there's some truth in what they're saying. You just have to, if I'm listening to this guy and I'm listening to what he's a word of faith preacher, so I'm listening to what he's saying. And there was some truth in what he was saying. Now, a lot of his premise was what I call man-centric gospel. Mm-hmm. It's about how I'm going to have a better life. And I'm like, okay, good. That's not what the gospel is all about. Here comes some of that worldly stuff. You know, yeah. so we got to get yeah. all that junk out. Mm-hmm. But trusting God, taking God at his word. See, that's truth. Mm-hmm. That is truth. That application he had had gotten a little carnal. You know, because I'm going to have the word of God to make sure I got the best career. Right. I'm going to have the word of right. God to make sure I get the most money. Uh, I'm like, no, that's 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 those what you call them in inor- the organic solids, though. That's yeah. stuff that, that, right. that, that, that inorganic solids that are getting right. you in a way you down and cause you start thinking stupid. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we have to filter that out. But again, if you are like my wife, you have a very sensitive palate to water. Mm-hmm. Then you taste it when it's wrong. Right. Uh, me, I don't have a very sensitive palate when it comes to water. So. I drink the water. It just is wet. And if it's cool, I'm good with it. <laughs> you know? right. And so, but with the word of God, we can't be that way. Mm-mm. We can't be tolerant. Mm-mm. We really have to go back to say, what does the word of God say? So that's a good point. Yeah. Okay. So, so James, water, 40 years in water, 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 40 years in water, dealing with water, selling water. It's good for you. Filtering water, filtering water, hooking houses, up. Pure water, water. Hooking, hooking up houses, protected people. Just put in a system in last week. 
where their well water was 10 times above the federal limit for uranium. Here in the valley. Greek. 10 He's times the federal limit. So the, so the water times. that they got out of their ground yeah, well. was poisonous water. It would kill them, times. basically. No, right? it, it's more of a chronic effect. Okay. Stuff like that shows up you know, 20, 30, 40 years later so in So you your wouldn't organs. even know until later you on You wouldn't know. Life. So that's why the federal government... Oops, sorry, Ryan. <laughs> that's why the federal government sets standards. So as we talked years ago, my brother, the, the spiritual effect uh-huh. is we get lazy, mm-hmm. we get the world in us, mm-hmm. the water becomes contaminated. So when we it. give it out, mm-hmm. it's not good for people we give it to. Mm. And I like what you just said. It's chronic. It is I chronic. give it today. You might not even notice it today. You don't. But you it's, don't. It's 10 years down the road when your marriage falls exactly. apart. Exactly. I've treated the water up in McCall mm-hmm. that was 20 times above the cyanide level. For cyanide. Even cyanide I know what that is. For, yeah. Yeah. You don't taste it. You don't taste it. And the family had cancer, and they traced it to the water. We put wow. in a system, but... For some of those folks, it was too late. They had cancer, and now they were fighting it. Mm-hmm. But so the industry I'm in is exciting because they get to fix water and make babies healthy and protect families even when they don't have a problem. Mm. But on the spiritual side, how much more when I go into a home and I meet people, and it's just spiritually, where is this home? Right. You know, mm-hmm. What kind of spiritual water do they get? Is it adulterated through institution and doctrine of men? You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And just all the stuff that you guys talk about. On your podcast, it's like, Lord, help us. Help us, you know, deliver your word unadulterated. Mm-hmm. I think that's what I was trying to get at, too, at my, my posing question, because I think a lot of times that is what happens. We do get um, just that impureness in us. We don't yeah. realize it, and I think it is. It's a chronic. It's a good way to talk about it. It's mm-hmm. chronic. It's a disease it that it's going to fester. You might not see it at first, but as it grows, and it just brings death and deterioration Manifest to your life. Manifest in unbelief. Right? S-I-N. Yeah. S-I in the biggest mm-hmm. disease in the world. It's, it's, it's what they call it's life threatening, right? Yeah. <laughs> It'll destroy you. It is my brother. It'll destroy you. I, 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 that, that, I, that, as they say, that'll preach. It's, it's chronic. It is. It's not always, you know, sensational, mm-hmm. but it is deadly. And over time it will destroy you. It's some subtle things mm-hmm. that we always talk Water. about. It starts subtle, but. Yeah. Water. Mm. The Lord gave me a home a long, gosh, I was in Okinawa, Japan back in 84 and uh, my first year of marriage, and I was thinking about then I wrote this poem about water, and it's just the concept was that water is is such a subtle substance. You know, you can pour it in any shape, and it'll take the form mm-hmm. of any shape that you put it in. It just, it's just it's compliant in that regard. But yet water can tear down granite. Oh, sure. Mm-hmm. And it'll yeah. just tear down granite. It'll, it'll work down. It'll destroy the city. I've seen a tsunami city. documentary. Yeah, this, and this <laughs> water is, is such a subtle mm-hmm. thing, yeah. but yet it has so much force and power. Mm-hmm. And I've seen it uh, just tunnel through, through mountains. Oh, sure. It's, it just tear them up, you know. I mean, even like the Grand Canyon, isn't water. that created from water? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Just... And contrary to proper belief, that wasn't millions of years of erosion. No, it that was, was the pour the out. Flood. That's the flood, <laughs> the drain line of Noah's flood. And, mm-hmm. right. and we saw the same thing happen, right? And Mount St. Helens, when it uh, erupted, that water melted off the, the snow and it came out and carved those valleys in a matter of days, not years. Uh, and it had all the lines in it. Right. Well, this is this. And no, it happened in a matter of days because mm-hmm. of that amount of rush off. But water will do that. It's, it's that yeah. powerful. And yet, mm-hmm. here, you know, we, again, just going back to what we said before, the heavens declare the glory of the Lord, but the earth does too. Well, and, sure does. and we see that mm-hmm. in this simple thing we call water. Uh, it is it's there. It's so, it's everywhere. It's so, it's such, such a, it's so abundant that we take it for granted. I mean, in the morning, there's dew dripping off the leaves. I mean, there's water everywhere. Sure. And that's how the Spirit of God is. He's everywhere. Mm-hmm. And he's doing, his presence is there, should I say, because he wants to get our attention. Because what does it say? He doesn't desire that any man mm-hmm. should perish. Mm-hmm. And uh, he wants us all saved. He wants that's us all. And, and contrary to proper belief, uh, contrary to, well, anyway, contrary to us, there will be a number of us who won't be saved, mm. but it won't because it won't be because the presence of God wasn't there. Right. Correct. It will be because we didn't respond to His call to His mm. love. Yeah. And I, and I know there are brothers out there who will say, "Well, God's not calling everybody," but mm. uh, you know, I I just go back to the point of you know what? When we all get to heaven, I'll look at you and say, "I'm so glad that you selected to come." But exactly. I'll say, and I and I chose to come, but God chose me. So I, I it's it's a moot point. I think it's those things we can argue about that makes no difference. Mm. 
But uh, the truth is that God's presence is everywhere and his message is the same. Sure it is. And um, some hearts will not respond to it. And, and to their shame and to their harm, they won't respond to it. But this water is real. Sure it and, is. And God has put it there for us. So, uh, gosh, praise God. We start talking about water. Here we are now, <laughs> half hour later. and well, Come on. And uh, water is still the topic of the day. I should have you back. We can talk about radiation. <laughs> If you would like, I've got an interesting story That'd behind be good. that. <laughs> you can tell me about a dream we talked about the once. Talk, uh, it wasn't a dream, brother. Oh, it, it was real time. Uh, you want to talk about chronic and acute. Oh. Radiation is a whole different topic. Oh, mm. sound like another conversation, huh? Come on now. All right. Well, until next time, then, we can talk about radiation, maybe. Okay. Cool. God bless you. Can you want me to add something before we go? I think that was a good sum up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like for this, I was like learning. This is great. Yes. It was yeah. good. That's what so. happens when you sit around smart people. I know. Just, no, no, no. Just so yeah. much wisdom. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> right. We'll take it. 40 years of water. It's like walking through the years. desert. I was born in water. Walking through the desert. Look at you. Stay well, praise God. So until next time, you guys, hey, stay in the water. God bless you. We love you. Remember, God makes you thirsty, but he also gives you new life. Mm-hmm. Until next time, peace. Peace.